I am so excited you're here because I have several truly high-end Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs that you're not going to want to miss. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay, friends, for DIY number one, obviously, I totally forgot to hit the record button. I was just so excited to get these DIYs out to you guys that I jumped the gun. But all I did was lay out the transfer that I wanted to use. I marked it. I used my painter's tape to tape off that middle section. I painted it with my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was completely dry, I taped it off on the top and bottom and stained it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Once that was completely dry, I removed the tape and then I dry brushed some of my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain on the middle. But I just did a light dry brushing. Um, I kind of wish that I would have went a little bit more heavy, but no big deal. Once the dry brushing was completely dry then i'm going to stir up my paste really really well you always want to make sure that you stir it up that way you don't get any bleeding and then i went ahead and transferred on my image Once I transferred that on, then I peel back my transfer to reveal this gorgeous, crisp image. And this is why I love it so much, you guys. The images come out absolutely gorgeous. It is literally so easy to use. Anybody can do it. In fact, when my daughter was five years old, she was a pro at Chalk Couture. So I know she can do it at five years old. Anybody can do it. You don't need any special software or, you know, machine. Now, don't get me wrong. A Cricut is nice for certain things, but I just personally do not have the time for a Cricut. Um, so Chalk Couture is my go-to. Once I had my image transferred on, then I'm going to take these half unfinished wooden beads and I hot glue them at the bottom and at the top as well. Next, I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I'm going to stain all of my half beads. Now, again, I forgot to hit the record button, um, but in order to get in between all of these, you just want to make sure that you're looking at them at different angles and just cover any spots that you missed. And the easiest way that I found to do this is do kind of like a twirling motion with your brush. Once that was completely dry, then I just dry brushed all of the half beads with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I went into my stash and I pulled out some greenery. Now, I got these from Walmart, y'all. If you've been around for any amount of time, then you know that I absolutely love Walmart florals. They are really high-end looking, but they are just such a great price that you can't beat it. So, I got these at Walmart. I cut a few picks off of the main stem, and then I kind of bent them so that they would fit right on top of the wooden beads and then once i was satisfied with the way that they looked then i went ahead and glued them down at the bottom with some hot glue now looking back while i'm editing this i kind of wish i would have put them at the top instead of the bottom however you can let me know down in the comments what you guys think so once I had the first type of greenery glued down, I also took a little bit of that other greenery right to my left hand side. I forget what it's called. And I just kind of arranged that at the bottom to cover up the stems or the picks, I should say, whatever you want to call it. And then I made a simple bow with this ribbon that I got again at Walmart and I glued that down to the top. I also dovetailed the ends and this is exactly why I love doing wood round projects because they are just so easy to do. They come out absolutely stunning and I'm just so in love with this sign. Let me know, are you guys tired of the wood round signs or are you like me and you literally could never get tired of them? You 
guys, we are so close to 100K subscribers. I just cannot believe it. I could not be more grateful. And if you guys are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out. Plus subscribe if you haven't already. Become part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss any DIYs. With that being said, let's jump back into today's video. For the next DIY, I take this Market Fresh flower sign from Dollar Tree, and I was not sure. At first, you guys, I was going to stain this, so obviously I'm staining it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Y'all know my favorite stain, and I am in no way affiliated with them. I do have the link down below, um, but I do not earn anything from it. I just personally love this particular product so much that I just use it for everything, um, but I stain it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and then I wipe away the excess before I blow dry it. Now, like I said in the beginning, I was going to stain this and then paint all of the little details and the wording with my white Waverly chalk paint. However, I actually got a different idea. So the Again, if you guys have been around, then you've heard me say this. This is how my ideas come about. Like, I, it starts out as one idea, and then as I'm going, I'm like, I just start adding and, and getting different ideas. So, I start by painting the um, edge underneath the trim. Underneath, oh my god, y'all know I can't talk. Underneath the trim. Uh, white and on the original sign there is like a line so I just kind of followed the line and I painted that with my white paint now this next part was a little bit tricky so I realized that I wanted to make a farmhouse sign with this so I took these wall creation stickers from Dollar Tree they're like um, wallpaper and I start by laying out the entire sign tracing it and then cutting it out now i just wanted to have that middle piece covered so i was like holy crap how am i going to do this and get it to the right shape and right size so like i said i just um traced the entire sign cut it out and then i laid it on my sign to kind of eyeball how much i needed off of the edges and then I just cut a little bit off of the edges, um, little by little. You, I didn't want to cut too much off. So you can always cut more off, but you can't add it. You would have to cut a new piece. So I did go ahead and cut that a few times until it was perfect. Then I realized that I really did need to cover more of that edge. So I just went ahead and covered a little bit more. And then once that was completely dry, I dry brushed all the way around that white inner part with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and my chip brush. And my chip brushes are always linked down in the description box below in my Amazon shop. You will see all of my links are now in one place because I do have them in my milkshake, which is just just like a link tree. I then use the same brush and stain and I dry brush all the way around the little wall sticker. Of course, y'all know I am super impatient, so I go ahead and make sure that's super dry with my blow dryer, and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing around the edges and the frame of this sign with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to take my little sticker and I'm going to take the backing off and then put that right in the middle and then smooth that down as best as possible. Then I'm going to take this farmhouse transfer. I'm going to lay it down and then smooth it out once again and transfer that on with my black chalk paste. Okay. 
once again you want to make sure that you have nice even pressure and then I peel back that transfer to reveal yet again this gorgeous image now this transfer and the rest that I use in this video I believe are from Amazon and I will leave them linked down in the description box below for you guys Next, I'm gonna take these Dollar Tree crates and I'm going to take the sticker off and once again, surprise, surprise, stain them with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Once I had it covered on the outside, I do go ahead and wipe off the excess stain and then I also stain the inside as well. Once the first crate was completely covered, then I go ahead and stain the second one as well, and then I dry them with my blow dryer. I then went inside and grabbed an egg. I just personally love brown eggs, so we had some, and I wanted to get the exact brown egg color for the eggs that I am about to paint so I just went in my acrylic paint stash and I just pulled out a few different colors that I thought would go together to make the brown egg color so I ended up using like a mustardy yellow a little bit of orange and brown and I just continued to add those together until I got the perfect color then I took these little mini eggs from Dollar Tree that I got back at Easter time. I put them on skewers and I painted all of them with two coats of this paint that I made up. Once those were completely dry, then I took some antique wax by Waverly on the end of a chip brush and I just kind of flicked that onto the eggs because as most of you know, brown eggs do have little dots and speckles on them and if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know how OCD I am to make things look as realistic as possible. Um, so I just did it until my eyes were happy and as always I suggest that you do the same. Once they were completely dry and I pulled them off the skewers, I went ahead and painted where the skewers were. That way you could not see the inside of my little eggs. And then I took my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I went ahead and I dry brushed all the way around my crates. As always, if you do not like dry brushing, you can totally leave this out. I know some of you just like the more modern look and some of you like the rustic look. So whichever look you're going for, you do what makes you happy. Dry brushing personally makes me happy. S happy. <laughs> someday I'll be able to talk y'all I appreciate y'all bearing with me um, but dry brushing makes me happy so I personally add it but it's totally your choice once they were dry brushed then I went ahead and glued them together and then I took a round dowel rod from Dollar Tree I cut it in half and then I glued that to the back of my sign Once the dowel rods are glued down, I just make sure there are no glue strings, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to my little crates. Now, I wasn't too sure how I wanted to do this, if I wanted to glue it to the back or to the back inside, and I ultimately decided to glue it to the back of the crates. So I just put some glue on the front of the dowel rods as well as the bottom of the sign, and I go ahead and glue that in place. And honestly, you guys, look how cute this is by itself. You could put so many different things in here, some greenery. Um, you use your imagination. Let me know your ideas down in the comments. Maybe I will switch mine out from time to time. But I just took some of this Spanish moss. I put that down in the bottom of the crates, and then I arranged my eggs at the top. 
and I still felt it was missing a little something. So I took these circle ornaments um, from Timu, I believe, and I cut off the little edge of the ornament to make it a complete circle. I sand it down smooth and then give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was dry, I take my chip brush and my voodoo stain. I dab off the excess and dry brush all the way around the circle as well as the inside. And I did use a pretty heavy hand. Now, once again, if you do not like dry brushing, you can totally skip that step. Next, I'm going to take this little chicken transfer. I'm going to transfer that on to the middle of my circle. Once again, making sure to use even steady pressure. Do not use too much paste. Make sure your paste is nice and stirred up. That way, when you peel it back, you reveal a crisp, gorgeous image. Once my little chicken was dry, then I went ahead and glued that to the middle of my crates, making sure that the bottom of the circle met the bottom of the crate so that it sat nicely. And that was it for this project. I did put a little bit of greenery in the back. I felt that it was just missing a little color and I absolutely love the way that this turned out. It's so funny that this was originally going to be a market sign, like a flower market sign um, I, I was just gonna paint it and call it a day and this is what we came up with so let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number two okay friends for DIY number three I'm gonna start off with a roll of jute and some painters tape I'm going to cut the end and then add some painters tape to make sure that I can get through these beads. If you haven't figured it out, we're going to make a beaded garland. So I just tie a knot, or I should say a loop at the end of my jute, and then I'm gonna start by um, adding the beads. These black and brown beads are from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start with black, go to a natural wood one. Now, the natural ones came off of hanging signs from Dollar Tree and um, I used the frames for something completely different than having the beaded hanger on it. So of course I always save stuff like that and I loved that these were a little rustic. They were not completely perfect so I actually really love that. But you guys can get very creative with these. You can use your own pattern. You can use different colors. You can actually use unfinished wood beads beads and just paint them whatever color you like but I did find the black and the brown from Dollar Tree so I just alternated the brown the unfinished wood black unfinished wood brown so on and so forth once I was done with my garland then I did not tie the end just yet you guys are going to see here why but I made a tassel by wrapping it wrapping the jute around my hand about 30 times taking it off of my hand, tying a piece of string up at the top, or jute at the top, cutting the bottom, and then I also tied another piece a little bit further down from the first knot at the top. You wanna create a loop at the top, that way it's super easy to add to your garland, and then I trimmed down my jute. Once I was done trimming my jute down to make sure that it's nice and even, y'all know I'm OCD, so it takes me a little bit to cut each piece perfectly. But then I go ahead and I uh, space out my beads and I pull out my ribbon from Dollar Tree. These came in strips with multiple different patterns, uh, multiple different farmhouse patterns, I should say. And they were a little bit too thick, so I just cut them in half. These are two inch strips, and I just went ahead and cut them in one inch strips and then opened them up. I put them in piles. I did end up using two packs, but I didn't use all of the strips, so I probably could have gotten away with just one pack, but no big deal. Now I have strips in my stash for something else, but I did go ahead, lay them on my cutting mat. I cut them in half, and then I cut the end in half once again. So all together with each strip, you should have four pieces of fabric. Once I had all of my pieces cut, 
I then took these farm animals from Dollar Tree that were on a shorter garland. I cut them off and tied them to the end of my garland and then I am ready to add the strips of fabric. So again, I just started off with the um, black pattern and I tied that on the bottom and then I went every two beads, I tied another one and I just alternated the patterns. And this is exactly why I did not tie a knot at the end because as I went along tying my fabric, I did have to continue to push the beads up and adjust them. So that's why you definitely want to make sure to leave the end, um, not only with plenty of jute at the end, but do not tie it that way you can adjust it. So once I was done adding all of my fabric, every second bead, I tied my jute tassel, making sure to double knot it several times. Once I double knotted it, then I cut off the excess and I also did cut the pieces of fabric a little bit shorter. And the reason you don't wanna cut the fabric shorter at first is because if you have a super short piece, it's actually really hard to tie a knot. So you always wanna start with a longer strand and then cut it down as you go if you don't like how long it is that way you have plenty of material to work with and look how gorgeous this turned out I cannot get enough of it let me know down in the comments do you guys like these patterns would you have changed anything up I'm always super curious to know your thoughts Okay friends, and for DIY number four, if you guys are still here, I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. So I'm gonna take these square boxes from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna start off by gluing them all together with some wood glue and some hot glue. The wood glue is gonna make sure that the hold lasts and then the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together quickly. That way you can move on to the next step without having to wait. So I glue the top three together first and as you can see here, I obviously um, had the bottom at the top, which was no big deal. I just removed the sticker and then I did the same for the bottom and then glued the top to the bottom. I then took out all of the drawers and I painted all of the sides except for the back. Now, when I was doing this, I was on a time crunch, so I probably would have painted the fronts of the drawers. I should have said the fronts of the drawers that are now gonna be the backs of the drawers. Um, but again, I was on a time crunch, so no big deal because you're not gonna be able to see it. And then once I was done painting the drawers, then I went ahead and painted my little cat cabinet, shelf, whatever you would like to call it, and I did all of the sides, the back, as well as the front little edges. I did not worry about painting on the insides of the boxes because the little drawers are such a tight fit. You're not gonna see the inside anyway, um, but if that bothers you, you can totally cover it, but once again, I was on a time crunch. I then placed my drawers back into the boxes, making sure that the front pattern goes to the back. And then I'm gonna take my larger chip brush that I get at Home Depot. I get a pack of 10 for pretty cheap. I think they're like eight bucks for a pack of 10. Don't quote me, but I do get a big pack from Home Depot. And then I use my white Waverly chalk paint to dry brush all the way around the edges as well as the front. And again, if you don't like dry brushing, totally skip this step. Next, I'm gonna take these mini transfers from Dollar Tree. No, not Dollar Tree. <laughs> I'm so used to saying Dollar Tree. Amazon, I got these off Amazon. Once again, I will link them for you guys. And I just cut them apart and kind of uh, arranged them in the front to my liking. 
and of course I forgot to hit the record button but I did just transfer them on with my white paste now they did bleed a little bit because your girl forgot to stir my paste but no big deal I think it still looks beautiful and then I took these little mini pulls once again from my Amazon shop and I go ahead and super glue them down to the middle of each box once those were glued down then I'm going to take these wooden houses from Dollar Tree I'm going to start by, I was going to measure them out onto the box, but I went ahead and removed the backing. It's super easy. All you have to do is just score the paper on the inside of the box, and then you're going to cut around the back of the box where the backing meets the frame of these houses, if that makes sense, and then it just pushes out really easily. So once again, I do that for both of them. And then I go ahead and lay out that backing onto my wall tile from Dollar Tree. Y'all absolutely loved when I used these in a previous video. So once I had them traced out, then I went ahead and cut them down. And I also forgot to mention to get the most out of your material, I did go ahead and cut them together side by side, or I should say trace them side by side. That way I used the least bit of material as possible then I cut them in half and I gave them two good coats with my white Waverly chalk paint and the easiest way to do this since it is patterned is to just kind of do like a twirling motion and that is just to make sure that every bit of this gets covered and then once the first layer was dry then I went ahead and gave it a second coat once that was dry I took my large chip brush and some antique wax by Waverly I almost said Dixie Belle voodoo stain but the voodoo stain is more of like a watery consistency whereas the antique wax is more of like I said like a wax so some things I like to dry brush with my Dixie Belle voodoo stain but for something like this the wax just works a little bit better once I was satisfied with my dry brushing, I did use my rub and buff like I did in my previous projects. And of course, I will link that video um, in the description box as well as the pinned comment for y'all where all the other info will be. And I just kind of dry brush that over the pattern to make it look like the other decor that I made. Then once I was satisfied with that, I went ahead and glued that down to the back of my house. Now, of course, y'all know that I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. So I did just have to trim that to the back of the little house, which is no big deal. I could not cut y'all, which... <laughs> I hear that from a lot of you guys as well. I don't know what it is, but I could not cut a straight line if my life depended on it. <laughs> but once I had my backs on and cut down and ready to go, I just dry brush all the way around my frames with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Um, the Voodoo Stain just takes a lot better to this type of material. And then once I was satisfied with the way it looked, then I glued the frame to the back. If y'all are still here paying attention, y'all are the real OGs. And I just want you to know how much I greatly appreciate your love and support. And I would so appreciate if you would share this out for me, y'all. I cannot believe how close to 100K we are. But anyway, um, leave me a chicken emoji down in the comments. That way I know you're still with me. But once I had the backs glued on, then I did cut the excess off once again um, for some odd reason I guess I didn't cut it down good enough but I did take a sharper pair of scissors to make sure that I cut it down as best as possible once I had both of the frames glued to the backs then I took those circle ornaments once again cut off the tops of them sanded them smooth and then stained them with my Dixie Belle voodoo stain Thank you. 
once they were completely dry. Then I dry brushed with some white Waverly chalk paint all the way around both of them. Next, I'm gonna take this transfer once again from Amazon. I'm gonna cut it away from the other transfers. And then I wasn't really too sure which farm animals that I wanted to transfer, but I ultimately decided to do the farm fresh with the egg and the eggs at the top of the animals right in the middle of the circle. Um, this time I got smart and stirred my white paste. I also made sure to push down my transfer really well so that it did didn't bleed and then transferred on the chicken to one of them. I peel it back and I'm like, yes, it didn't bleed. I was so, so happy. And then I transferred on the pig to the middle of the second one. Now I did not want the chicken to transfer on again. So I did just add a piece of painter's tape. Oh, I did add a piece of painter's tape to the bottom of the chicken to make sure I didn't transfer on the pig. And then I added the painter's tape behind the chicken on the second one to make sure that the chicken didn't transfer and then transferred on my little piggy. And then I pull him back and look how stinking cute this turned out. And then I took away the painter's tape. I dried both of them. And then I took a square block, a mini square block from Dollar Tree. I cut that in half with my miter shears and glued that to the back of the circle and then glued the circle down to the middle of the houses so that this had kind of like a 3D effect. I then grab my little crate decor and I'm going to hot glue my houses to the top on an angle kind of like in a V shape. Now you can totally stop here and keep it as is, but I just felt that it was missing a pop of color. So I did take the greenery that I have from Walmart. I pulled a few of the greenery pieces off of the pick and I glued that down right into the middle to give it a little bit more detail. Again, if you don't like this, you can totally keep it out, but I'm curious to hear, would you guys keep the greenery or would you have left it as is? And that was it for this project, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I cannot wait to hear which was your favorite project down in the comment section below. All of these were super easy to put together. I don't believe that it takes a whole, whole lot of skill to do it. So if you guys are a little bit nervous to do DIY, if you're new to DIY, I would definitely encourage you to try one of these projects because guess what? You'll never know unless you can do it. You'll never know. <laughs> Oh God, it's getting late. You'll never know if you can do it unless you try. Don't forget to leave a chicken emoji down in the comments to let me know that you guys are still here. I also want to just thank you and tell you how much I love and appreciate each and every one of you for being here, for making what I do possible. None of this is possible without you. And I just want you to know I'll never forget where I came from and I will never take it for granted. With that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from a heroin addict who is nine years sober. Oh my God, that sounds crazy to say. Nine years sober, you guys. And I'm just so appreciative. And if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. Thank you for being here. Also, I just recently lost 80 pounds of pure fat and have the best energy, focus, and mood of my entire life. Life, and I make a sizable income doing it, helping people, sharing my story, learning to grow on social media and build a brand on social media. So if you guys want to learn how to build a brand on social media and how to market yourselves, text my number, the word biz on the screen, or if you guys just want any ketone information on how I lost the weight or how you can get better energy, focus, and mood, text my number on the screen. Again, I want you guys to know I love and appreciate you so much until next time bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right